I think it's incredible. I think with the help of a really good video, an incredibly good video that shows, you know, very charismatic kind of style, with the help of that and what MTV did, boom, it gets these, uh, like, 89X and the, and the Edge and everything. They're picking it up, and that's how it's going to be. That's how it's number one on Billboard. Because it's really not pop music. It's just hip-hop music. But it's promoted perfectly. To make a long story short, we hook up, we do this thing, and 11 months later, we're uh, platinum. Hi My name is, is is all hook, and the rest of the album is all rhymes. I think it's going to change hip hop. He's a Detroit boy. Love that. So only one item can get signed. I don't know. It seemed like as soon as I stopped giving a f about what I was saying, people started giving a f It was like a reverse effect. Like, f you, I don't care if you like me or not. Oh, well, we like you now, you know? I did all that. Back about 13 years ago or so, 10 years ago, I was driving in the car with the top down, and I was listening to the radio, and this guy here, Slim Shidey, yes, this son of a gun, was on the radio. He was rapping, he sounded great. He was I rapping and singing and dancing and trolicking and frolicking about in the muddy playgrounds of the south fields of uh, Southfield, Michigan. Exactly. And I called the radio station and I said, yo, who is this kid rapping because he sucks and I'd love to take this guy on because I think I can make him a decent rapper if I write his lyrics for him. Can I have that? Right, right, right. Right? right Isn't right, that how that right. went? Me and Polly, my brother, my wife again, Eminem, my mother actually, we all believed that this thing was going to happen and it took this in New York you know, to, to hobnob with the hip hop heads and and put it uh, in the right place. And put it in the right place. I started off just as an attorney <clears throat> because I had a full time job as an attorney, not doing music law, but you know, doing personal injury stuff. And I wanted to get out of there and get into music law, but it's not that easy. So, um, you know, I'm sure you heard the rest of the story. The tape got up to Jimmy Ivey's office. Jimmy had it at home. Dre came over to Jimmy's house. Said, "What's this?" They played it. Dre was blown away by it. We're talking, uh, you know, talking about the tape and stuff. And uh, Dre walks in, and it's kind of shocking because it's Dre, and he's Dre. And we're nobodies at that point, except we knew we had the right product. And uh, when Jimmy took me into the room to do business, and I came out of the room and I looked at him with, the, <laughs> with a look that you know, that whatever that look was, what was the look? I don't remember what it was, but it was like... <laughs> We're here. We got the deal. <laughs> we, we got the deal. I got the deal, look. We got the deal. <laughs> we got the deal. This is Little Amsterdam. This is where we did the Eminem album. This is where we did the stuff here. And uh, it's platinum record. And what's your take on the last six months? What do you feel? I mean, Ooh. everything. <laughs> it's f***ing bananas. It's, 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 it's hard work. It's getting up in the morning. It's I get up in the morning, 7.30, 8 o'clock, get ready, I go get on a plane, get somewhere, go to the go to two or three radio stations, do an in-store, and then do a show. Like every, Non-stop. Like every night. Did you think it was going to be like that? I mean, like, when you envision yourself rapping and you always wanted to make it, obviously. No, I thought, I thought, I always thought, like, you f rap, you wear a gold chain. <laughs> Get the bitches, and then that's it. And the cars. And the cars, and you, and you drive, and you got a fat crib. That's all I thought. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't realize all of the f***ing work, the, the, the effort that goes into it and shit. It's and like, then it's, afterwards. It's 24-7. It's a, and it's afterwards, a non-stop after job. At least when people work regular jobs, they get days off and shit. Right. You know? Oh, yeah. That's right. Or I, I don't vacation get time. If I do have it, my vacation time is spent writing, so it's like... I don't or with Ke or to with do Haley, anything. Or yeah, or with Haley, or with Haley, Haley, or Haley running around the house while I'm writing. M is one of the most demanding artists in the studio. Demanding in the sense that he knows exactly what he wants. Yeah, <laughs> but I can do what I want to do. Okay, go ahead and play the instrumental. You know, I, I I have fun on stage. You know, it's not it's not all work. You know, I mean, even though. Doing shows and shit is, is 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 considered work. It's fun for me to do. That's what I love to do. I love that. It's like all of the work of, of writing the song and coming in the studio and recording the song and all of that shit is just so you can get so you can take it to the stage, and that's the fun part. Right. You know. 
I see M as an artist. I think M is going to get um, a little more personal with his music. I mean, he jokes about it himself personally and everything like that. But I think M is his his music's going to become more personal. He's already working on stuff for his next album where the titles of songs are Mom, uh, Kim, um, Our House, you know, just things. It's like it's sort of like a biography as far as M goes. And I think the music is really dramatic and moves along with that. Um, so I think that's the direction M's headed in.